So good morning, fellow ticket holders. Today we are going to go explore around Brownsville, Texas, as well as go to South Padre Island. And so far this morning, we've done a couple things. We went to breakfast at the Brownsville Coffee Shop number two. And what do you think about breakfast? It was delicious. <laughs> yes, it was great. Uh, Vanessa had a taco this morning with chorizo and eggs and stuff, and I just had some pancakes. And then we went to the coffee shop on 7th and Park and had some great coffee this morning. Definitely a highly recommended coffee shop here in Brownsville. And that's where we at right now. So we are getting ready to head out of the house here and go to the Gladys Porter Zoo. Yeah, it's been open since 1971 and it's huge on conservation. And it's just a great local zoo for the area, the whole valley actually. <laughs> I haven't been there since 2009 when I came and visited <laughs> Vanessa for the first time. She took me there because she loved going to the zoo and we had to go see it. So it's been yeah, a while. I think, I think that's the last time I went too, to be honest. <laughs> and it's been a while since we've been there. So we're going to go see what they have now and just check out the animals and just enjoy the day while we have some nice weather. Because apparently tomorrow and Friday, it's going to be raining. So we just have today with the good weather and we're just going to go outside and enjoy it. So come with us to the Gladys Porter Zoo here in Brownsville, Texas. Here we are, the Gladys Porter Zoo, celebrating 50 years, like Walt Disney World. All right, we have made it into the zoo and we enter right into Gorilla Island. So this is a Western lowland gorilla. You can find these in Congo and Southwestern Cameron. And there's also a baby back here in the corner. I assume we get closer. Here we go. Here's the little guy. Not really playing it safe sitting on the corner like that. We just missed him hitting his chest and banging on the pole like a drum. Little ones, the one that we just saw, and there was a the second one over here. So, fun fact uh, Harambe from the Cincinnati shoe that was shot and killed a few years back was born and raised here at the zoo at Gladys Porter Zoo. And I found the male gorilla, he is over here just chilling under the rock, just taking it easy. So we will see some Christmas lights not lit up while we're going along. And that's because they do an evening walkthrough with the lights. But we do have all this beautiful landscaping to look at. Like this cactus garden. And this wild ice cream sign. <laughs> I didn't know these grew in the wild. Here's another one of those light displays, the nativity scene. And another tree with all these cactuses just growing around it. That's really neat like that. So now we have come upon the Arabian Oryx. I think we see these on the safaris at Animal Kingdom. Now we have the Southern Ground Hornbills. So the ground hornbills are also known as thunderbirds. In some cultures, the birds are sacred. Killing one is considered a grave sin. Here we have the Orinoco crocodile. Venezuela and Colombia. And I believe this one is the female. They kind of are keeping them apart. What? Coins can kill. Who in their right mind would think about even throwing coins in at the crocodiles? Obviously the sign means somebody has done it. All right, next door here is the Cuban crocodiles. As you can tell, their coloring and scales are a little bit different from the other ones. And they look to be a little slightly smaller. Unless that's due to their age, but I'm gonna guess that they might be a smaller type of crocodile. All right, we have made it around to the American Flamingos. They're so close right here. Hello. Oh, hello. 
little camera shy. And we're probably water. They kind of put their heads upside down when they drink the water. Like that. Catch the water while it comes down the stream. The realm of the dragons. Not sure what's in here. Let's go check it out. Oh, it's a kimono dragon. Over here by the water, we have the Texas spiny soft shell turtles just lounging on the edge. Over here on the opposite side, we have the Mexican spider monkeys. It is lunchtime for the black spider monkeys and they are getting bananas. Vanessa just asked and they get fed twice a day, those bananas. We also have a rat who found himself some pumpkins. For some reason, there is a peacock that's warm roaming around. We have found the macaws and the parrots. Across from the macaws and the parrots, we got the Galapagos tortoises. Getting some water there. Find yourself a watering hole, Mr. Blackbird. I know, those birds are very loud. So over here we have the Northern Crusted Caracara. Looks like we have a free flight aviary we can go into. Why, hello there. Come down to visit me. Getting yourself some lunch too. Well, that was really cool to walk through and see. And then that guy come flying down to come say hi to me and show me what he was having for lunch. Ooh, over here, I see some of the bald eagles. Let's see if we can get closer and see them. So it looks like they have two bald eagles here. Got one right there and we got one over there. The camera can't really see it because it wants to concentrate on the netting. But I will brave this little splash zone to see if we can get the bald eagles on this side. There he is. 
or she. Not sure if it's a male or a female. You definitely see it better on this side. But at least this splash zone is controlled by buttons. <laughs> see, spitting frogs. <laughs> and just like Vanessa says, Harambe was born here. And this exhibit is in memory of Harambe. And this exhibit contains the capuchin monkeys. Have a YouTube channel. And over here next to the monkeys, we have the capybara, which is what? Capybara. Uh huh. It's the largest rodent in the world. So it's related to a rat. <laughs> the Texas sable palm. Well, that's really nice. There's going to be a phase two to this section, and they're going to have some other animals coming in, including sloths. We got even more Galapagos tortoises. We also have a second variety of a flamingo, the, the Chilean from Chile flamingos. You can kind of tell their pigment is not as bright as the other ones, and a little more pink than orange. We also have another crocodile, but these is, this one is from the Philippines. And an even another version, a saltwater crocodile. These ones are from Australia. It's definitely interesting to see all the different varieties of the crocodiles and how their scales and body colors are different depending on the area of the world they are from. Okay, I thought for a second this guy was real, but obviously he would not be up here on the deck if he was real. Otherwise, we would have a problem. So inside of this exhibit, we have the Australian kangaroos. They got so many. Oh look, there's a little Jimmy down there. They have an outdoor area for them to play and run around too. They were not out there today. Oh, there's one in the pouch. No tail. And across from the kangaroos, we have a Quincy or a yellow monitor. And this is Pepper, a northern tree shrewd. <laughs> and we have some sugar gliders. Must be feeding time. <laughs> We got a possum. Hopefully it has somewhere more to go than just this little circle. And we have some bats. It's okay when they're in here, but not when they get in your house. This guy's like, this is my modern melon, not yours. Short tail fruit bats. And these ones up here are trying to sleep. And, and these are bush babies. And this is a tree kangaroo. Sure is a stinky one in there. That's like that display at Zoo America at Hershey Park. You get used to the smell though. We have another primate exhibit, and these are the gibbons. And it's interesting to see the two different tones on their fur. That one's more of a dark brown, and that one's a light brown. The wind is really blowing, so they're kind of just trying to hold on for now. A 
found them a snack. Nom 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 nom. So these big cow looking things are called guars or saladongs. They come from South Asia. And back here we have the adox. The critically endangered antelope. And they come from Northwest Africa. And these primates are called shamangs. We also have a white rhino. Some really tired chimpanzees. Got one guy here checking everything out. Back here in the back, Vanessa said they used to have the elephants, which I believe I remember seeing those when I was here. But now they have camels. Shh, they're sleeping. And this is the Bank of America waterfall. And next up we have a hippo. He's sleepy too. Oh. So I believe this was a new area from the last time. They have a butterfly house back here in the South Texas Discovery Center. Let's go see if we can see some butterflies. There's also bug exhibits in here with the butterflies and we got some millipedes. And a tarantula. And cockroaches. So there's not many butterflies back here, but I think it's because it's not really butterfly season. You know, we'll see that in the spring, but you do have all those creepy crawlies to look at. And all of these plants that butterflies like to live on. And next up we have the zebras. We have a mandrel, which is like Rafiki. Cute servo cat. And some tired hyenas. I don't think kids would try to climb this tree with all these spikes on it. And we have some giraffes. So Lalo is smart. They know how to get the food. She gets to feed them. So cool. Like, give it to me. Nope. So have you done that before? I've never fed a giraffe before and that was so cool. And they've had this for a while? Uh, they didn't have it when I was growing up. Um, it's been a, but I have heard that they have had it, so. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. And apparently there's also an aquarium here. Let's go in and see what we can find. Apparently you can touch a manta ray here.
another new area that we never saw before. That was really neat. Yeah. And now we're gonna go in and see the reptiles and amphibians. And we've made it back to the front of the park and we're gonna go into the gift shop real quick and check out the merchandise before we leave all right so we just finished up at the gladys porta zoo and that was great um yeah. i don't remember any of that from the last from 12 years ago there's a lot of new exhibits and like i said this is a wonderful zoo it's one of the best here in the valley uh, for texas and they're great on conservation they take care of their animals and it's a great little zoo to visit if you're ever in the area <laughs> yeah i really enjoyed coming here again um and we will continue with our day we are going to try to get down to south padre island and just check out the beach real quick and so we will catch you down that direction and a parking tip across from the zoo is free parking when available because it is out of middle school and it's five dollars if you pay to park with the zoo itself the minion says welcome to south padre island popular spot for people during the normal season but right now being November it's actually very easy to come down to the beach but it is kind of cold and before we leave this area there's one more thing we wanted to do we want to go up into the Port Isabel lighthouse you can actually go up into it let's go see if we can get tickets ticket to the lighthouse acquired so let's go up inside
And we're part way there. Some steeper ones. And then some old wooden ones. Now watch your head. So we made it to the first platform. And before we go up into the open area, we're gonna go outside here. these really small ones that go up into where the light used to be. We're at the tippy top. And up here we see the exact same thing as we saw on the observation deck. And now the fun walk down. Wow, what a journey up those stairs that was, but the view is worth it. Yeah. It is a fantastic way to go up and see the area. And the visitor center is the old Lighthouse Keepers building. And you can see here they have these old wooden barrels with the pipes going to them. That way it could collect the rainwater because it would have been off the grid at the time. Hello. So obviously we're not in Texas anymore, as you can see. We are back at home. But as I was editing this video, I realized that we never did an outro, so I will go ahead and do one now. Uh, Vanessa and I had a great time at the Gladys Porter Zoo, and even though it had been a long time, we really enjoyed being there again and seeing everything. And it's also really cool to see that there's this whole new expansion happening in the back of the park, that next time we'll be able to go, we'll be able to see that. So that's great to see that they're continuing to improve and add to this uh, zoo. Then when we went down the South Padre Island, we really enjoyed it. Uh, it was very windy, so that's why a lot of the shots there was done with the music, because it was just wind blow in the microphones. There was really nothing for me to be able to salvage while I'm editing. So I hope you enjoyed seeing a little bit of the island. Um, on the off season, as I said, it's a great time to go. You can easily get a parking spot. Um, so I uh, really enjoy going to South Padre Island and checking out the beach. We did enjoy going to the Port Isabel Lighthouse as well. That was my first time going. Uh, it wasn't for Vanessa, but it had been a long time. The visitor center area outside, that is a whole museum. I didn't show that because it was just a lot of reading. And so if you do go to the lighthouse, be sure to go into the visitor center where you pick up your ticket and actually see the museum and then go up into the lighthouse and go check out the views from up there. It was really neat to be able to see all of South Padre Island and the Port Isabel. So that was really great. But we re-enjoyed our day that day before the weather moved in. And we hope that you enjoyed this video. So until next time, be safe, be kind, and adventure on. Bye. Thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you've not subscribed to our channel yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button below. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below.